Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Today is the fifth Sunday in Lent, and a warm welcome to everyone joining us online today as well. There are a few announcements to highlight. I invite you to turn to your inserts. First, a reminder that the annual Fall Festival and Quilt Auction for Camp Iwalu is taking place this upcoming September. So if you are a quilter, a crafter, um, someone who likes to create things to share for the enjoyment of others, I invite you to consider a donation to that to help them raise some funds this fall. Um, I originally said I thought that that was going to be held online, and it does still stay online. Their hope is to have that in person. Wouldn't that be fun? That'd be great. So let's hope for that. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll plan on an in-person event for that instead of being online. If any of you have any thriving financial products, don't forget that the deadline is March 31st for directing your choice dollars. Now, if you don't know what choice dollars are and you're a thriving financial member, don't hesitate to ask me, because I'd be happy to tell you all about them. It's basically free money, and uh, it, it's the way that the organization is chartered that they need to designate these funds to uh, nonprofit organizations. It could be any nonprofit of your choice, including our congregation, our Bible camp, LSI, among any number of other places. So uh, please ask me if you have any questions about how to go about designating those. Also, if you have a particular fund that you'd like to have those designated to, if you do choose to give to the church, be sure to let us know in the, uh, in the office. Just give Jeff a call and give him a, a choice. Otherwise, uh, they will be directed to the high school youth, as has been the case for the last several years. Next week is already Palm Sunday. That's kind of amazing. The palms are on board. We will have them here the 100 of them. So uh, be sure to invite all of the, uh, the kids of the congregation. If uh, you look around and see someone who's not here, be sure to let them know that we will have the procession uh, with palms with all the kids. And, uh, and it'll be a, a day of celebration as we prepare our hearts and minds for Holy Week. Are there any other announcements for this morning? This will not stay put today. <laughs> If not, I invite you to stand as you are able for the confession of sin. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy, and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined, and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus, as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn is Tree of Life and Awesome Mystery.
praise to Yahweh. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went out to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what, sh what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it, and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Where are you from? It may seem like polite conversation or maybe interesting way to describe your geographical identity. But this question really matters, doesn't it? And I think that folks from the Midwest in particular take that question very seriously. So for me, I lived in three different communities from birth to the age of 18. So when people ask me where I'm from, I usually say, Northern Illinois. Because certainly each of those communities contributed to who I am as a person today. And almost always, the next question is, oh, which town? My answer is always the third place that I live, which was Prophetstown, Illinois. And I think that's because it's where so much of my story was written. The experiences and the people who most deeply affected and influenced my life. And in a lot of ways, I think that's what is happening in this week's Gospel reading. The scene, of course, is set in Jerusalem in Judea. Jerusalem had been the capital city for the Davidic dynasty, named after King David, and is the home of the temple. It's the only place acceptable to bring one's offerings. It's made clear in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah as other altars were destroyed. And it is the preferred place to celebrate the festival of the Passover. And in consequence, it's a location of extreme political power and persuasion. But the story opens with some guests at the Passover, and they're from Greece. Well, the ancient Greece that we learned about in history in middle school and high school is often celebrated for its high points of military and culture. This is a different time and place. At this point in history, Greece was in a decline long past the heights of such great minds like Plato and Socrates. And at any rate, the story doesn't even occur in Greece. These Greeks are out of place. They're sojourners, they're foreigners, not from Palestine or the surrounding areas. 
as such. These Greeks approached Philip, one of Jesus' disciples, hoping to gain an audience with Jesus. And Philip, we're reminded in the Gospel reading, is from Bethsaida in Galilee. I'm going to test your biblical geographical knowledge here just a little bit. Galilee is located in a part of Palestine that would have been the northern kingdom during King David's rule. In the first century, it was separated from Judea, the southern kingdom, by Samaria, and is considered by many to have been what might have been compared as the Israelite equivalent of the backwoods during that time. So Philip, too, is far from home, but not as far as the Greeks themselves. At least he's still from Israel, right? So then Philip approaches Andrew, a fellow disciple, also from Bethsaida in Galilee. And together, these two Galileans approach Jesus. In John's Gospel, Jesus is not said to have been born in Bethlehem of Judea. And while the sign on his cross at the end of his life reads Jesus of Nazareth, which is in Galilee, John makes it clear that Jesus is not from there either. For John writes in the first chapter, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Jesus is not from Greece, or Galilee, or even Judea. Jesus is from God. <clears throat> Where you're from matters. And there's a political element at play here too. These Greeks, the foreigners, don't feel that they're worthy enough to approach Jesus, who is from God. And so instead, they approach his followers, and even then, they address these backwoods Galileans, these bumpkins, if you will, not as pals or fellow worshipers, but as lords. Which is probably a better translation of, of the word here in this passage, which in our reading, is translated as Sir. Lord, they implore Philip, we wish to see Jesus. And here comes in the second power play. Because the reader of John would, of course, know that Philip is not the Lord. Looking back to the first chapter of the Gospel again, he like John the Baptizer, should easily be considered not even worthy to untie the Lord's sandals. And yet we are not told that Philip corrects these pilgrims, these foreigners, these sojourners. Perhaps it's no wonder that he does not then go directly to Jesus, who surely would and does remind him of his place. From John 12, whoever serves me must follow me, Jesus reminded Philip and Andrew. But the power doesn't simply stop at Jesus. Father, glorify your name, Jesus says. And God does so. There is one Lord who is from God the Father Almighty with the divine voice sounding as a crack of thunder in anticipation of the crucifixion story and the power play between Pilate and the temple leaders to follow. This passage makes it overwhelmingly clear who that Lord is. And of course, where the true power resides. Where are you from? Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. You wash us through and through, and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive. Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy is great. great. You fill the earth, from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder of your presence. And you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds. Protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You promise to write your law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace and give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence, those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, those who need healing of mind or body, those who are dying, and all who grieve. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and in death. Empower this congregation in discipleship. Equip children and teachers in Sunday school, confirmation and learning ministries. Give us your truth and wisdom and teach us to follow Jesus. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have given us words to worship you. With all those who have died in Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all of our prayers to you, O faithful God. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And all else with you. I invite you to share a gesture of peace with one another.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. This banquet of God's grace is for all God's children. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, Thanks be to God, you may fear. Thanks be to God.